It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock. Do you know where a DJ is at? I know where I'm at and I'm here with you. Yes, it is a DJ roundtable show and welcome back. This time we have less people than last time. Last time we had a full screen and we had 30 people. This time we have four. Uh, again, people are doing things. I know one person is coming in late. Uh, and I think maybe a couple other people are coming in too. Uh, it's always, again, look for we are working DJs and always great having people come in and out of the conversation, in and out of the show. And I want to thank you all for tuning in and watching. Uh, we have some great DJs here from everywhere in the Midwest to the East to the West Coast. So we have coast to coast DJs, North to South, East and West. And it's always great to have you wherever you're watching it from. And if you're here on Twitch, please make sure you follow the channel. If you're not watching it on Twitch, make sure you watch it on YouTube. If you are watching on YouTube, do me a favor. I have this huge monster called the YouTube algorithm. We all know it. We all have to deal with the major beast. Help me slay that great beast and do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell icon so you know what's coming on. Make sure you smash the thumbs up. Whichever way you want to do that is great. And then share the video with someone else. That way it helps people know, hey, this is this is about DJs, about DJ stuff and about DJs talking. And hopefully you have some fun. We got some great DJs here. Again, cool thing in South Carolina, Hunter. We got Matt, DJ Salsa's out there in California. He's getting some uh, some great delicious tacos. And we got Dwayne in Ohio right there, the hitman. Um, and I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit, because I've seen this a couple of times come up on feeds with stuff. And I want to see how you guys handle uh, Do Not Playlist. And the reason why I want to know that, because... Especially with weddings, people see things, stuff goes viral. There are certain uh, services may say, hey, uh, put this as your top 20 songs you have to play. Or these 20 songs have been played out. Every wedding is different. Every wedding is, you know, always up to the client what they want to do. And what Tracy and I do when we talk to people, and I use Vibo for uh, my customer service relation software. And we have it in there, do not playlist. And when we sit down with them and we proof the music with our couples, because we actually, you know, talk to them, send them the app. They take the app, they fill the app out. A few weeks prior to, we have a meeting with them, either via on here on Twitch um, or on actually we're using uh, uh, Zoom um, or we're over on uh, in person talking to them about their event. And when we do that, one of the things we ask is, you know, when we go through the do not playlist, is it do not play no matter what or do not play unless requested? Because sometimes some people don't want certain things because whatever the reason is, they're like, oh, I don't want this artist or I don't want this song or I don't want this. When you have an art, when you have someone that gives you a long do not play list, uh, like this past Friday, we had... I want to say it was like 18. Tracy was here. She'd know off the top of her head because she's that good. Uh, <laughs> I want to say like 18 songs do not play along with like four or five artists uh, do not play. And again, not a problem. We were around that. Saturday was just basically two songs. Uh, this coming Friday, I think it's like another like five songs, a couple artists. And I think s next Saturday is two songs. Um which is fine. You know, it, again, people have different things. We ask them, you know, is it do not play no matter what or do not play res unless requested? And this gives you some, some some flexibility in it when I look at it. And if you're, uh, if you have a do not play no matter what, we're not, obviously not going to play that. But if it's do not play unless requested, someone comes up, okay, fine, great, it's requested, let's play it. <clears throat> Depending on the song, too. But, you know, sometimes, you know, people will get, you know, when you say, hey, I'm sorry, can you pick something else? They go after the couple or and they go up to them and go, hey, uh, I, I can't get my song. So it's like, oh. you know, it, I had to follow what the couple wants. Sometimes they come over and go, 
okay, go ahead and play the song. Or play the artist. Yeah, just go ahead and do it. Uh, but again, we want to make sure it's there what they want. So I'm going to start with Matt, who also deals with a lot of uh, brides and grooms. And how do you handle Do Not Playlist? Do you, are you flexible with it? Do you say, hey, uh, I would recommend that uh, you not take these artists out? Or what do you do? How do you explain that to them? No, I, uh, I don't get too many Do Not Playlists because most of my couples see what I do and, and more steer me in like the direction that they want. Um of like must plays, but in terms of do not plays, I mean, I get a lot of like, just like, for example, on Saturday, it's um, do not play any classic wedding songs. So, uh, which to me is excellent. Like I hate all the classic wedding songs. So, uh, but like, are they going to have an older, that's the thing is you need to be creative. They have something like that. Like, I'm sure there's going to be older guests there that, you know, you might want to warm up the dance floor with something that they know, but that's where like new disco remixes of stuff like September and uh, we are family and et cetera comes in. Uh, but I don't, I don't ever try to steer. Like if, if they don't want I say, okay, easy enough. Um, but I don't really get, like lately, I haven't been getting that like any big do not playlists. I mean, it's a lot of like no Bruno Mars, uh, no line dances. That's pretty much it lately. So, um, and then like if a guest requests it, I I always have mine. I don't I don't use Vibo because you don't need to pay a hundred dollars a month for something that's useless, but um, not useless. Something you could do for free is what I say. So I have my own template um, that's much nicer to read and easier to read than Vibos. Um, and it says in big, bold, red letters, do not play. And then I have everything listed under there. So if somebody comes up and requests it, I just, you know, say, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, you know, I point to that, basically point to the sheet so they don't think I'm just like not going to take requests. And then that's usually the end of that. So people ask that too. I get asked that in consultations. Like, oh, how do you deal with, with requests if it's on our like do not playlist? And I'm like, well, it's your wedding. If it's on your list, I have a big printed out sheet. So is it right there? And uh, that's that. So and, that's uh, how I do it. And, and when you have, um, when, when again, I, I heard you when you said, you know, you, you point people to the sheet and say, hey, I can't do this. Do you ask for another song or another, try and get another suggestion? Or are you trying oh. to say, hey, there's something else you want because again the last thing i i, I think you're, i think all of us here can agree that we don't want you know um someone walking up to the customer and um telling the customer hey you know uh the dj's mean and won't play my song right here comes jeff now <laughs> uh here's the dj's mean and won't play my song uh but they don't understand that you know again you we've talked to the client at least at least hopefully we talked to the client and explain to them, hey, you know what, you know, some, we don't want people to come bugging you. And that's one of the things when I talk to people, I don't know if you do the same thing, Matt, or Dwayne, or cool thing, uh, Hunter, um, is when I talk to people that do not playlist, that's one of the things we emphasize. Do you, is it, you know, is it something you're not a fan of that you could go, like go to the bathroom or get a drink or something, give you a break off the dance floor? Or would that, you know, no, it's just, they, don't want, they, they just don't want their, they don't want their wedding being some generic vanilla white bread crap. This is what I get it's the vibe that I get for mine. Uh, so I mean, that's the thing is like, if you're a guest at a wedding, you don't really have a say in things. Like, I don't feel like guests should even make requests. It's not really their position to do that. They're not the one paying for the service. So I always get guests saying, "Oh, are you taking requests?" And I'll be like, "Yeah, you know, what's what's your request?" If it's, if it's good, and and I'm, most of the time I get requests that are like, you know, not bad. So. I could totally work it in. I don't really ever get requests for line dances, surprisingly enough. Um, but I, I do get, you know, a lot of Bad Bunny requests, a lot of, you know, some hip hop stuff that would go off. Um, I had one for Hotline Bling on Sunday and it turns out like the guy knew a whole dance to it. And so, you know, that's why I always try to play requests if I get them, because chances are like there's a reason behind it if it's somebody that's like in the wedding party. You know, and the funny thing you just said, Hotline Bling, uh, the wedding Saturday, I had uh, one of the groomsmen, he was uh, all asked about Drake, 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 and I uh, did um, did Popstar, and then the hot, Hotline Bling, he was just going off on it, going crazy, yeah. enjoying himself out there dancing, but he was grabbing people, pulling on the dance floor, everyone was singing Hotline Bling, and it was just, 
it, it was just it was just went up uh, greatly. Uh, but that's one of the things, you know, again, like what we do is we have our request sheet. We have it on our high boy. And then we grab those sheets. We look at those sheets over and over again. And I could tell you, at least in my market, that we get quite a few requests, usually shot chest slag, cubit shuffle, electric slide, stuff like that. That's usually in the first sheet, first couple. But it's always See, interesting some of the things people request. You're also having a sheet so these people don't have to like say it to your face because I feel like they'd be embarrassed to request some of the stuff they do if they had to actually <laughs> ask the DJ for it. <laughs> so I, maybe I, can, I don't him. judge. I don't judge. I want people <laughs> to come there and enjoy myself. I, I you know, I look at them all as great people, just like I look at all the DJs here as my friends. Mm -hmm. I mean, I agree with them with 100 percent of everything. But the thing is that there's not one person here I would not say, hey, if Matt came to Chicago, I'd be like, hey, Matt, let's go, let's go have dinner. Let's go do this. Let's hang out for a while. Or Dwayne or right. Hunter or Jeff or anyone in the group. And that's because of the fact that to me, it is what it is. And again, just take it, say, okay, fine, great. Does it work? It does not work. Um, I'm gonna go over to uh I'm gonna go to Dwayne next here, because Dwayne just did a, a nice wedding with uh with uh uh, working with Kevin there in Ohio. Um, and I heard uh, a lot of great things uh, um, from Kevin. He was talking about, the, I guess he talked to the client and the client was just over the moon for you. And congratulations to you on that. But uh, how do you handle um, do not playlist? How do you, how do you work those do not playlist and at, at your wedding? Well, I actually use Bible and there's a do not play um, part down there. And usually when they put a song in there, when I do consultation, I'll point that out when I go through the, you know, the, the timeline. And usually they put down, do not play songs because again, I don't have a lot of reviews and everything. So they think that I'm just another a cheesy DJ. So that's where they're coming from. They say, don't, don't play this because every time they go to a wedding or something, they play the same cheesy song or the same line dances. They want something more up to date and creative. So once I get, to talking to them, a lot of the times what is put on the don't playlist really doesn't become an issue. Not unless it's one of those things where it, it means a certain thing to that person, they feel a certain way, then I'll, I'll avoid it. And then if somebody requests it, I tell them that that's on the don't replay, uh, don't play um, songs from the bride and groom. And if they go talk to them, and they say it's okay, I'll play it. But other than that, I don't have a problem telling them I'm not going to play it. Because remember, I'm a school teacher. I tell people no all the time. And that's that's the thing is that um, I feel that, again, you have an advantage being a, uh, well, now retired school teacher, but still can teach. And I know you're going to go back and do a little, uh, still a little teaching here and there and sub and stuff. But the thing is that, you know, having an advantage of dealing with that for, years and years and years as as a teacher professional uh gives you a leg up on most djs <laughs> and then you can explain mm -hmm. it in a common cool collective way and saying make a better choice you know basically you know uh, unfortunately this choice is not available there's other choices available so let, let me help you make one you just hit them with the you just hit them with the really <laughs> 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 that's what you come up with really like because uh, i've had i've had some great requests where like i've like they'll request a song and be like oh i didn't even think of that like that'd be a banger or like i'm playing some dubstep and they're like they you know they call out oh play some ray volpe or play some riot 10 and i'm just like heck yeah like i'm so i don't know sometimes it's uh but i i have a different market like i i played a insane taylor swift remix that uh went off insanely well on Friday's wedding, but I've tried it at my uh, different event, and uh, people looked at me like, "What the heck is this?" So, <laughs> yeah, Every, I use Request Now, and yeah, yeah, I use the Request Now app, and so the Saturdays, um, I tried that; it it never worked for me, and I tried three different trials with that guy, and for some reason, my phone provider just will not allow the messages to come through ever. So, I don't, I don't know. yeah, I only had a problem like one w wedding but, I, oh. but i'm thinking it was just a girl because she claims she sent the text but i never seen it because i got everybody else's but yeah they um this past saturday they came over some good um requests i didn't think about playing but once i played it it's like it set the whole tone and it was r r real easy to go from there 
And that's that's the thing is that um, if you can get stuff going and you can have that, and again, if people do different ways of request, again, I do a pen and paper. And the reason why is that people can look at the sheet. I take the sheets off. It, it, the sheets are, you know, a penny each. It just, you know, I guess a little old school. But also, you know, people like writing it down and having it on your phone. Then you're looking at your phone and people are like, don't think you're paying attention to what's going on. So it's it's one of the things I try to stay off my phone when I'm DJing. You know, yeah, I do take some photos. I do take some pictures. I try not to talk too much, you know, go on social media or stuff like that. I may grab my phone to look up a song real quick because I'm thinking of it um, or off a computer. If I don't want to shrink down, I'm mixing and I'm like, okay, let me look real quick for a song. I, I, I'm thinking lyrics and I can't think of the title off the top of my head. I'll do that, but I try to do that very sparingly because of the fact that it's just not what I want to do. And I'm going to turn the volume back up on my microphone. My microphone. Yeah, I had, yeah, I, yeah, I thought about that too, but at the same time, I'm like, I point out the, you know, the phone number and then the QR code and the sign and everything. So when I do play that song, they'd be like, yeah, that's my song. I, I requested that. So it's funny seeing them do that. Yeah, they, they do it with me too. It, it's fun when they, when they say, oh yeah, it's a song I'm requesting. Yeah, they're up there pumping it out and they're over there. Yeah. Or they grab their friends when they hear it, they go run into the dance floor. Like, I did this, I did this, I did this, you know. Oh. And that, that's why, I mean, the, the one guy on, on uh, Saturday, for Drake, he was just like, yeah, this, this, that Drake was his jam, you know? And again, we had a bunch of other stuff too. He was out there dancing to it and singing along. But when Drake hit, that was like his his monster jam. He was just out there, like just, just having fun, enjoying himself, you know? <laughs> so Hunter, in South Carolina, which I know you just did a beautiful wedding, a gig log you have up on your YouTube channel. Um, question for you, how do you handle... Do not playlist. Well, I technically don't get no uh, uh do not re uh playlist. I pretty much uh do the old school way and I use like text messages, Facebook messages. Like the bride actually sent me her rough draft of all of the songs that she wants for her wedding, especially for the formalities, the first dance, father daughter dance, mother daughter. All that stuff, and then she actually sent me an Apple Music playlist with all of the music that she wanted for her wedding. So I rarely deal with uh, do not play with us. Do you ever do you ever talk to your clients about that? About like, hey, you know what? Uh, I know I don't think yeah. anyone here would uh, purposely play a song with bad words and you know obscenities. Yeah. Uh, at least I yeah, because that's, yeah, yeah, that's actually in the rules <laughs> of, of the venue. No music with profanity have to follow all the music, the sound ordinances, and all the stuff has to end by 10 p.m. and all that stuff. So, yeah, it does work out. Yeah. There is, there's no song that I have on my list that is actually that's not clean. It's All of it's pretty clean. I, I, I do have a few uh, dirtier ones, but I don't play them in public. You know, again, you collect so much music after a while, and, yeah. you know, there's stuff for, you know, personal um personal use that uh for music that you have that's like yeah i wouldn't play this in public you know um that takes me back to my youth when i was uh much younger but uh it, it's one of the things that you you talk to them at all say hey you know this is is there something you don't like why here something you don't want at your at your wedding no. or at your party or your event uh, no because i trust the clients of their decisions on what music they want and they know exactly what music they want and i trust them Okay. And, and um, I actually got some, yeah, at the wedding, I actually got some pretty good requests, like the Mark Arena, Shadow by Livingston. I played some technical remixes of some nursery rhymes, Head, Shoulders, Knees, and Toes, The Wheels on the Bus, oh, God. from Lindy Pierce, and they actually liked it. One of the ones I know you had, I, I, I saw the video you showed, you had some younger kids there. Uh, Let It Go, Soul, Go, Soul is a popular song for <laughs> kids. Um, yeah, you get a bunch, go, especially yeah. you get a wedding with a good amount of kids. You play Let It Go, you have the parents out there, and you even have I, I've seen, uh, like you know, people in her in her 20s and their early 30s yeah. singing along to it too. Because we got to remember yeah. that's so, that that movie is kind of older, it's not like it came out last yeah, year, you know, Frozen is kind of older, you know. It, it, I'm trying to think of when Frozen came out, I have to look it up, but and you know, another thing that's shocking is one of the kids actually asked for Johnny B. Good. <laughs> There we go. Damn. 
Yes, Johnny Culture. Good <laughs> from the fifties. Like, yeah, okay. a lot of like a lot of high schools. Um, <laughs> uh, there's some high schools that want like um, like it's tricky and uh september and like some of the older stuff and it's it's odd it's like uh well, you know yeah. it's not just all well, chapel run, run and... dmc like it's tricky for run dmc it has no bad words in it and it's it's fun and the music video is hilarious with Penn teller so here, here's something to think about I, I just looked up real quickly frozen is 10 years old 2014 came out 11 no 11 2013 came out in 2013 the first frozen yeah. well it says 2014 june 30 2014 i'm looking right at google well, then Google's wrong. It's 2013. It came out in November. Oh, no, November 27th, 2013. Okay, I see now. It's further yeah. down. But still, it's okay, cause... you're that almost an 11-year-old movie that the kids still know and still sit there and listen to and go, hey, you know what? And But it, it, you get people that were, let's say they're 27 now. The movie came out when they're 16 years old. So they might have seen that movie. Or you know, knew the like younger brother or sister, and they sing along to it. it's 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 funny when you get stuff like that little uh, little music nuggets like that. You, you get people to sing along to it. It's it's kind of fun because that was over... like the that was like the last Disney movie with like mainstream music success. Um, and then recently, there's um, I don't remember the name of it, but there's like a new Disney series right now that like there's a huge soundtrack for and like all the kids that are the new Disney age kids that watch Disney channel. Love it. Um, I can't remember the name, but that, that's well, con oh, the uh, Canto is a Canto. Canto, Yeah. No, yeah, no, Canto. Not a movie. it's not a movie. I know a lot of my kids like descendants and um, yeah, descendants, descendants. That's the one. And it's, it's huge. And uh, I did a wedding with like, you know, the family goes to Disneyland all the time and they're big Disney people. And I had never even heard of Descendants. And they requested like six Descendants songs and every kid knew every single word. Mm -hmm. well, like, this again, we're, we're, we're adults. We usually don't watch too many uh, Disney cartoons. I do. It's, it's, it's good. <laughs> it's good music, though. Uh, yeah. like, it's oh, very, no, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying it's, like, it's very well produced. Like, it's, it's, it's catchy. It's definitely, you know, but well, whatever. You know, and you think, you think about, you know, like, again, Encanto, um, you have, you know, uh, the, was it uh, the Bruno song? Uh, oh, we don't talk about Bruno. We don't yeah. talk about Bruno. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that, yeah. yeah that's that right there, and, and it, that's what? That's yeah. four years old, five years old. That movie? Oh, five plus, I think. Yeah, it's it's it, 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 it's 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 a you know a couple of years, so it's it's one of the things that you have to watch it, you know. And uh, again, having a granddaughter that's going to be nine, it, it's something that you know you you see. Um, so Jeff. You know, again, you have uh, some young kids and stuff like that, but how do you handle do not playlists for events, for weddings or school dances or anything? How do you handle it? Do you, uh, is it no play, no, don't play or play no matter what? Or do you have, do you talk to them and say, okay, if it's requested, play it, or just no play absolutely? Or how do you handle that? I, I usually ask the client, you know, what's, um, what's their, you know, whole reason for, you know, putting a song on the do not play list. Is it, uh, they don't like the genre, the artist I'll, I'll try to find out. And that will kind of lead you into, you know, further, you know, songs that they may not want to hear, give you a little idea. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes it's weird. I mean, I, I had one gig where they were like, do not play any B-52s. I don't care what you play. Don't play any B-52s. And I'm like, well, you know, what do you have against B-52s, you know? Um, you know, one wedding, you know, do not play Beyonce. Another wedding, do not play Shania Twain. Um, so, you know, you get you get all all uh, all over the map. So, you know, you just got to work with them. And, you know, the good thing is there's plenty of uh, songs and music out there to make everybody happy. So a few songs on the do not playlist is not that big of a deal. So, but I mean, it, it is... Uh, unfortunately, if you get a, a request for no line dance, then, you know, I usually tell them you better get people on the floor. If I can't get people on the floor with without, if I can't play a line dance to get people on the floor, 
then you better be on the floor yourself bringing people out there because, you know, that is, and unfortunately, uh, as we all know, some of the line dances are the major draw for, you know, getting people onto the floor if the floor is dead. So uh, whenever I get that request, I usually will confirm it, <laughs> make sure that that's what they want to do. So. Yeah, it's it's like, you know, uh, I had a couple of weddings that uh, people didn't want Taylor Swift because, you know, Swift, Swift, um, Taylor Swift's been in, in news for all her music and her concerts and all these people going to it and, <clears throat> excuse me, um, people have, you know, enjoying the music, but are like, I'm not a fan for her new stuff and it's kind of, or, you know, I'm not, it's not a fan for Taylor Swift, but it's, it's when you talk to people and you're like, you, you talk to them and explain to them that, you may not be a fan for it, but your guests that are there may love it. And we don't have to play all Taylor Swift all night, just like her top hit, like Shake It Off or something like that. Or like this past uh, Saturday, we did Cruel Summer. So because it fit and the BPM would fit right where we're at. And it just, you know, we had, you know, tons of young ladies out there singing and dancing. And everybody knows the bridge. <laughs> Everyone knows the songs. And, you know, it, it's it, it's stuff like that that um sometimes when you talk to people they're like oh yeah okay one or two is okay but don't make it an all thing all night or just like just like with the line dances if you talk to them say yeah it usually like well, again we can show them because i was talking before the request sheets i can show people the request sheets and show them that in the first probably five or six requests it's going to be cha-cha slide cupid shuffle or you know um one of the other slides and it, it's it's one of the things that people are like, oh yeah, really, yeah. Oh, that would oh, work. This. Oh, get this. When I played the cha cha slide, I actually got on the dance floor and danced the cha cha slide. <laughs> oh, so uh, the, the, some people do that. Some DJs will go out there. So yeah. we got some chat here going on, and uh, I want I don't want to say anything bad about the chat guys. I see some humor here. And I want to thank uh, I want to thank Kevin who's in the chat right now, uh, Mikey Mike in beautiful uh, Pennsylvania. He says hello all, and we were talking before bro, with uh, uh, Matt picking up some uh, some fish tacos there. Uh, he's eating some smash burgers, so I mean, he's got a smash a grill there, to smash them, or he went to smash burger itself, but he's eating some smash burgers, delicious. Um, and then uh, new Picard or actually Kevin. Uh, I get a do not play of any of Buddy uh, created songs. <laughs> I have, I, I've been playing with AI making songs for myself, and I got a couple okay songs. No, they're terrible. I, they're terrible. It's okay. They're, 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 they're okay. Just, they're not terrible. They just sound like AI. They sound like well, they're, they're AI. They're a robot. I'm not the one singing it. It's a robot. I know, but the whole point of AI is to not sound like AI, right? Well, again, then you know it's it's not it's not a real person. That way, you know. But, uh yeah, those songs right there are do not on his do not playlist. That's fine, great. Uh, Mikey Mike also says I always ask for do not play songs just because never uh, when someone can be cruel and request a song for the bride and groom from previous relationships. That is very true. Uh, someone can ask for a song that you know they broke up to with a previous boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever. Um, yeah, that that's one thing. That's why we ask to just to. Uh, make sure people are don't feel uncomfortable at their own uh wedding and that's that would be very very awkward to say the least to have someone come in and you know request a song plus that person right there that that's kind of a a, a jerk move i would say for that person uh to try and ruin someone's uh wedding if you're not happy with it you're not you don't you don't like the person then don't come to their wedding don't try and ruin someone's special day because you don't like whatever <coughs> um so yeah, uh, so uh, going back to uh, Jeff here for one other thing, uh, music wise, what what is some of your uh, any hidden tricks or songs that you go to for the kids, uh, like for Frozen for me? Uh, anything else that you got a trick for? Yeah, I mean you know for young young kids, that's uh, that's always a good one. Um, there's a few movies you know that you want to hit up, you know that are that the kids uh, have uh, have seen. Uh, for older kids, um, you know, I watch a lot of TikTok and I'll find out what's trending. And, you know, right now, uh, Freak Nasty Da Dip is trending big. And, uh, you know, so I've got that queued up ready for my homecoming next week. So 
Uh, there's a couple of versions of that. I'll probably play the uh, Ultimix version of that, uh, you know, cut out of it at about two minutes. But, uh, you know, there's, um, there, there's, it, it's, it, it's interesting that the kids these days, teenagers, uh, are, are finding new, old music in new ways, you know, through, um, through social media, TikTok, uh, Instagram. So it, it's good. I mean, I love it. I love playing some of the old stuff that, you know, we played 20, 30 years ago, even. Um, so that's, that's fun to me. And it's, it's exciting to see that they, uh, that they get it. I, I saw one TikTok. It was pretty funny that, uh, uh, an older lady, you know, uh, that had, uh, she watched the, uh, the, a couple of girls doing uh, the dip, uh, dance. And she was like, no, 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 this is how it's properly done. And then she pr proceeded to do it as it was done back in the nineties. And, uh, and, and so it's interesting to see that and, um, you know, to see the old school songs coming back. See now, because I know freak nasty, I know the song, uh, the dip, uh, I would play the original one, just go, oh, I wouldn't play a remix. That's just me personally, but, uh, you know, another one, uh, another thing I see in a lot of TV commercials now, uh, I know, oh God, I just saw the other day, uh, Martin Solberg, uh, hello was on, I can't, I can't remember what commercial it was for, but I heard it. I'm like, oh, Hey, I know that song. I like that song. And that's like, yo, know, from 2011. So that's, you know, again, 12, 13, 14 year old song. And it's coming back in commercials. That's like, really? But it, it's always, you know, again, a lot of things are coming in commercials right now. It's like, um, I'm like, wow, that's, that's, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of places are trying to get um uh they're trying to get more and more music there which is great but the thing is that it's also like you know the, those member berries are hitting really hard though um uh, man yeah and it's it's funny because it, it's you you see some requests to the, these kids and they're putting up requests from like stuff from like the 80s like the smiths and the cure and like wow they're making a comeback or what you know how are they how are they being exposed to this so it's interesting to see that Oh yeah, the the Smiths. Wow, that that. Wow, wow. Um, wow, the Smiths. Did, did I, I, I hurt I, you with that? <laughs> yeah, big, yeah, big mouth like, strikes again is a is actually a big hit right now. Or no, I mean it's it's trending at times, and it's uh, you know, I, I may play it for my uh, school dance next week and uh, see see what kind of response I get. Yeah, they're they, they have the great uh some really great songs, the Smiths. Um. I I know a few people who love their music, and then they're that that's that British, you know, uh, pop, you know, first gen, first generation. Uh, and on, I'll try that on serious. It's a uh, first wave. That's what it is. I can't remember what it was. Uh, Tracy listens to it, and you, you hear the Smiths on there. You hear a lot of those Blondie and stuff like that. They're called their uh, alternative first wave, alternative music. Um, before our turn turned into like grunge. Um, but the thing is that I, I'm, I'm very, that's, that makes me give me a lot of hope because that's a lot of great music there that, uh, kids listen yeah. to. It's like, wow, I, I never got into the gothy and, uh, the, um, emo kids and stuff like that. But the thing is that it's nice to know that, uh, they can appreciate some good songs and hopefully they're listening to more than just 30 seconds of a song. And uh, they're listening to the whole song and they know that, you know, uh, there's a lot there, especially with, um. Uh, God, I'm trying to think now the one song. Uh, I know at the tip, tip of my head. Uh, God, and I, I got to think about it, but I'm going to go. Oh, Matt's gone. Um, yeah, oh, no, Matt's what? back. Matt, what, um, hmm. what uh, songs do you do for kids? What, is there a song that or two that you like to do for uh, for younger kids? I don't DJ for the kids. I don't think kids belong at weddings. Uh, they should not be invited. They should not be brought along. Kids need to be left at home. The wedding is an adult affair. So I do not play any songs for kids. Um, period. I don't know. Oh, this is me. A wedding is not a place to bring your kids. They shouldn't people, be. People do it. People, people, and a lot of times it's family affairs. Mm, yeah. I don't really get that many weddings that are, that have kids. And if, if I do, like, I'm not going to like play some lame kid song just for them like that's just a hard line rule with me um most of my couples like they'll tell me like if there are going to be kids there they'll they'll kind of make a note of it of like oh we're gonna have you know some families there but 
don't feel the need to play any, you know, kid songs, but also like, I'm not, I'm not going to play. Like, I don't know. Like the, the kids will dance to most of like the wedding music anyway. Like, Oh yeah. Yeah. Kids dance to pretty much anything. So, um, Oh, yeah. here's the thought. You should actually add in a Australian DJ, Lanny Pierce. He makes a lot of like nursery rhymes, but techno version, huh. like more dancey. Techno more nursery rhymes. rhymes. And I, I, yeah. I think about the song, It's How Soon Is Now. That's the one from the Smiths with their guitar. That right there. I've never heard How Soon Is Now. Yeah. Yeah. I've the never heard of this. Intro, it's, it's like the guitar intro. They, iconic. Yeah. That, yeah, that, uh, yeah. Johnny Mars uh intro on the guitar. I mean that's uh that's one of the more iconic 80s, you know, guitar uh, licks. And, yeah, and that that's the thing, that's the the crazy thing. I I was remembering the guitar, I remember the, the the sound and it it's it's I can't remember how they did. I heard it on I I heard it on first wave they were talking about how he did the iconic sound. But that once you hear that sound, you know it's the Smiths coming, you know it, it's that song. And again, I I know the song, but I couldn't remember the title. I had to look it up as how soon is now. That song right there again, iconic, iconic, iconic. Um, and you know, it's it's one of the things that you know, having um having some kids at a wedding, again, it, it happens most weddings, uh, either flower girls or ring bears, but sometimes again, people want their families there. I don't have a problem playing, I don't want to play a whole night of kids' songs, but having one or maybe two just to make them happy earlier on during cocktail or dinner, you know, that way it's like okay. The kids are happy and done and over with. Um, who, uh, Dwayne, did you uh, share your uh, kid song? Uh, no, because in fact, the wedding that um, Kevin was telling you about, that's what I had to deal with. So we had a lot of dead time and um, the kids started running around. So that's when I played like the Descendants, the Zombies. Um, let me see what else. Uh, the Some kid bop stuff. The call me maybe and definitely the dance stuff like the hit the Quan, um, Salento, watch me and all those kind of songs. Yeah, hit hit the uh, hit the Quan, um, watch me. Um, even though the artist is a uh, a bad guy, but still people. And that's one of the things I always try to talk to people. It's like sometimes you need to separate the artist from the art, and we may not agree with you know, the artists do something wrong or did something, or uh, it could be, I'm, I'm, again, I'm not getting political here, but it could be political sides or whatever. But if you enjoy the song, enjoy the song, enjoy that bit of it and take the art separate from the artists. And yeah, cause that, cause yeah, cause I was going to say, cause um, for the last two weekends, I'm surprised that the bad boy record still jumped off. It, it didn't hit me until I heard Diddy's voice. And then I was like, but they still, dance to it it wasn't like it hit like when uh r kelly got in trouble or that split second when michael jackson was accused so you haven't hit well, him yet e even even now like i'll do uh i believe i could fly for r kelly during dinner you know and it, it's when i, I I'll, I'll do that you know tired the later part of dinner but i'll throw it every so often and you know people are they, they sing along they know the song it's a pretty song, but again, it's separating the art from the artist. R. Kelly, what he, you know, again, he's in trouble, and I'm leaving it at that. And but the thing yeah. is that he does have some really great songs, and sometimes we need to separate the two and just say, okay, fine, great. What the person did is bad, but what the art was is good. And that that's the thing is that pre you can still appreciate the song, appreciate the art of the song and the song itself and say, okay, you look at a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of singers and bands, they've done some, they have, people have done bad things. Even like you get some uh, current ones like Jelly Roll. Jelly Roll was a bad guy. Uh, Curtis Jackson, 50 cents. He was, you know, a drug dealer. You know, uh, you can go through and see all these people did bad things at one time in their life. And yes, a lot of people have changed that and, and corrected themselves and they went to the path of, Hey, I need to do the right things. Uh, and then sometimes people do things and they get stuff in trouble. Like, you know, right now, uh, the flavor, the flavor right now is, is uh, P. Diddy, uh, Sean Combs. And it, it, it's, he's the one who did whatever he did and he'll go to court and then see what happens. Uh, but, you know, if someone wants to hear something, okay, fine. Or Kanye West, you know, or this artist or that artist. Kanye is different though, because Kanye's music is actually good. 
Diddy's and and R. Kelly's is, I mean, none, none of it's like essential wedding party music, but like Kanye's got just, he's featured on so many songs too that are just like bangers. And, yeah. and he didn't, I mean, whatever. He said some stuff about you. I'm Jewish. I don't care what he said. Like he's Kanye. He's, he's got a mental disability. So we'll just chalk it up to that. I, again, it, it's it's one of the things again separate the art from the artist, and yeah. I mean I agree with them for for certain things they say, but their song is their song is good. Mm. Yeah, okay, I already have it in my library. I already I already paid for it. I have it. It's in my repertoire. You know, okay, fine, great, and that's that's one of the things again talking to your client and explain to them a little bit so they have a better idea, a well rounded idea with with music. Um, Mike says, wedding isn't open for all. It's uh, your wedding and your choice not to invite children. Uh, Baby Shark and Frozen uh, Dance have also had uh, also head and shoulders, knees and toes. Uh, head, shoulders, knees and toes. Don't know that one. Head, shoulders, knees and toes. I don't know that song. Um, I don't know that one. Um, but the head thing is that and shoulder, knees and toes, oh, knees and toes. That one. Yeah. Or, yeah, or the Lenny Pierce version, the techno remix of Head and Shoulders by Lenny Pierce. That one's been really hitting on TikTok, real like a lot. Yeah, um, I do not partake in the the TikTok, so <laughs> I do watch the charts though, and I got to do a shout out to our friends at Dish Jackie News and uh, Mr. Young over there. He does give a list of top songs on TikTok. If you're not on the Disc Jockey News mailing list and you're not part of that world over there, I definitely recommend going over there and uh, make sure that you're on his list and go through um, what he does over there because he has a lot of great information. Uh, Disc Jockey News is, uh, uh, they're friends of us. Um, I love their stuff. I follow their stuff. And again, uh, Mr. Young, uh, John Young over there, he takes a lot of time and grabs the, uh, top TikTok songs and you'll see stuff trending on there. It's always interesting to see. Uh, to see. And when I started to see Freak Nasty on there, it's like, oh, wow. You know, it, it, there's certain songs that it's like, oh, wow, that I've heard that song since, you know, I, I've heard the song, you know, I've listened to it, but I haven't heard that song like popular in a while, you know, and it's, it, it's always, it's always interesting, always interesting. Um, going to the next thing uh, really quickly, because uh, we have, you know, about 15 minutes left. Uh, I want to touch on this one, see how you guys handle it. Uh, this past week, I mean, you can hear, hear my voice and whatnot. Um, I'm getting over, uh, I'm looking at allergies, um, or maybe I'm, I was sick. Uh, hit me Thursday. Uh, Friday, I was totally stuffed up. Saturday, totally stuffed up. Uh, wasn't really coughing, but, you know, not feeling 100%. Saturday, I was really fatigued. We had a long day. And I was really um, thinking of pulling the trigger and calling a friend to come DJ for me because I wasn't feeling 100%. Uh, it wasn't like something I just said, oh, you know what? I don't want to DJ today. No, it was, what do I do? Uh, Tracy uh, said, no, you got to do it. Um, don't bug your friend. Yeah, you can get through this. And I did, you know, I wasn't trying to be a baby or something, but I just don't want to. DJ where I'm not feeling well, but what is your plan when you're not feeling hundred percent? And I'm not talking about being a little tired or little, I'm talking about, you know, being sick or, or playing hurt. Um, you have, you know, you broke an arm or you, uh, you, you have the flu or whatever. How do you get through a gig not feeling hundred percent? How do you get your, as they would call uh stage health? I'm going to go with the Hunter first with this one. How do you uh, how do you get through uh, an injury or not feeling hundred percent? Well, there hasn't been a time when I, because I haven't been sick since before COVID, and I don't think there was a day where I it was close to a gig and I wasn't feeling well, and I actually toughen it out and just hope for the best. Okay. And then uh, what about... Um... Like, usually I get better, like, if I am sick, I always get better before the gig. Okay. But if you're sick at a gig, you, you start feeling ill at a gig, um, how do you, like, get yourself through it? 
I just toughen it out and just hope for the best because I'm a tough guy. <laughs> oh, there you go. So, uh, uh, Matt, how do you uh, handle not feeling 100 percent for a uh, for a gig? Unless I'm on my deathbed, I will be there. Um, there is no cancellation. There is no. I'm going to give this to somebody, even if I'm throwing up or hardly able to walk, I will be there. Um, I don't cancel on my clients ever. Um, I've only ever had to cancel twice. And once was because the freeway was closed due to flooding and we physically couldn't get to the gig. And the other time was when it was the height of COVID and I had COVID. Um, but then I did do a couple gigs where I had COVID and just wore a mask uh, when it was not a big deal anymore. Because um, again... Like I, I have a responsibility to be there and I'm not about to just pass it off at the last second to somebody. Um, so I, and I have broken a foot before and still DJed uh, with a broken foot. Um, so, so I had a little scooter. I just kind of set that next to the DJ booth. I had an assistant with me to help obviously with loading, but um, I mean, I'm yeah. So I, uh, if I get sick at a gig though, I mean, I don't. I never have knock on wood, but I've definitely had some questionable food that hit me right before dancing was about to start, and sometimes during dancing, and you just gotta throw on a slow song. That's my my secret is careless whisper is about five minutes, so that gives you a nice good little break to go to the bathroom, um, and take care of whatever you need to take care of if you need to. So, um, yeah, that's, but that's always horrible. <laughs> I, I always carry um, Advil with me, ibuprofen. I always carry um tums or whatever for stomach and uh usually with those i'm should be good so yeah we we have a we have a jump bag and we have in our jump bag um in the first aid area we have uh acetaminophen ibuprofen um and an antacid um but you know it's one of the things like for for saturday i woke up and i thought that you know i'm like uh, maybe i should call him and she's like no I would never cancel on a customer. It's it's either we do it and we take care of it. Um, and that's the thing is that, uh, you know, I, I, I was thinking about, I was thinking about it and I was just discussing with Tracy for and it, that discussion lasted about the whole entire uh, 40 seconds. <laughs> so uh, Jeff in your household, um, because uh, I, again, you, uh, you do stuff by yourself pretty much. And then your kids, I know, help out every so often. How do you uh, how do you handle it if you're not feeling 100% uh, for a gig? I show up. I show up and do it. Uh, you know, like Matt said, unless you're on your deathbed uh, or Mikey Mike says spinal sur or spinal cord surgery. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I, I show up. I mean, you know, knock on wood, I have been relatively healthy. Uh, at all my gigs, um, I've had a headache or two. Uh, again, just like you said, acetaminophen uh, goes a long way. Sometimes, um, even if you're not feeling 100%, um, uh, you know, just a couple of acetaminophen before the gig uh, will just get you through the loud music, you know, the thumping bass and uh, standing on your feet for, you know, four to six hours. So, uh, uh, you know, it it's always... Um, it's always a good thing to have some pharmaceuticals <laughs> for aches and pains. I'm right there with you. I never, I've never gotten sick of a game. I'm right there with you. Yeah, and that's that's one of the things that you know I I, I played hurt before. I actually did a wedding wedding. Oh god, when was it? Um, I want to say 2010 or 12. I had double ear infection. I had 20 percent hearing. Um, so I could hear only 20% of the sound coming into my ears. And, um, it was very difficult to DJ because imagine DJing, uh, wearing earmuffs and everything's muffled and very quiet. And even if it's very loud, you can't hear and you had to kind of fill the beat. I felt like someone who is, uh, uh, very heavily challenged in, in hearing. And it was, uh, something that, um, to say the least, um, it went off very well, and people loved it, uh, and they loved the wedding, and I got a great review from it. But the thing is that a lot of people, you know, I was not feeling 100%, plus uh, also having a uh, double ear infection. And again, it it, it, it sucks. It it's absolutely sucks, but uh, I got through it, and I had had Tracy tell me to turn the volume up and down. She had to pay attention to it because I couldn't distinguish 
the levels of volume is that well because everything sounded muted to me. <laughs> yeah, the weirdest sensation, I remember going to the doctor. We went to the uh, urgent care center uh, the day before and they gave me uh, antibiotics or like you got severe ear infections, which I get them. And uh, I, they gave me oral and then they also gave me an injected uh, uh, antibiotic. Um, about two days later, my ears actually opened up and actually start hearing. But yeah, it was um, very painful uh, to do, but, uh, still did it. Uh, Mr. Dixon, how do you handle, uh, not feeling hundred percent at a, uh, at a gig? What do you do to get through uh, it? I, I try to medicate myself either with, if I take, um, have to take Benadryl because I have allergies. I, if I have to take it, I try to take it way in advance so I can at least try to sleep most of it off. Other than that, I'll take like um, Tylenol or Pepto-Bismol for my stomach. And then the one time I did have to bring my wife with me because I had a procedure done and it's one of those things where they put you to sleep and it, I was still drowsy. So that was a scary thing. So she came along and helped set up everything. Did, and did I, she drive, I hope? She hope she drove? Um, no, to the, uh, to the gig? Yeah. Uh -uh, I had to drive. I had to do that. that was That's why it was scary. Oh. She came later because she had something else to do, so she came oh. later. But yeah, that that was kind of scary because I didn't know who who to call because the person that I would have normally called got me to get because he had two gigs. So that, now that was a scary situation. Well, hopefully you'll never be in that situation again, especially after mm. uh, being uh, sedated and being knocked out. That's that's not mm -hmm. fun, and you know. Uh, it, it, it's one of the things that anytime, even uh, daytime surgery, that you know you get knocked out. Uh, they want they don't want you to pick up. Even they uh, don't want you uh, to go and get like Uber or Lyft or anything like that. That you actually have to have someone you know come and grab you. That's over the age eighteen to, for they release you. It's like it, it, it's I understand it totally because it's a liability. And you, again, you don't want to do something to hurt someone. That's the that's the big thing. You don't want to hurt people. Mm -hmm. uh, we work so hard at it. Uh, but uh, I want to go back to uh, to Matt real quickly on the um, on the gigs and stuff like that. When you're hurt, how did you hurt your foot? I got to ask that. How did you hurt your foot? Oh, uh, it was in 2018. I uh, may or may not have been a little drunk and fell off the back of a stage and uh, landed on the edge of the dance floor. Um, it was like a raised dance floor, so I had a little lip. And uh, I didn't really fall. I kind of like stepped backwards off the stage thinking there was a step there and there wasn't. And uh, just went straight down and hit the little lip right on the edge of my foot and uh, broke the fifth metatarsal, which is by the pinky, separated it by two or three millimeters and uh, got surgery and uh, took almost, I mean, I didn't really start like running and fully, you know, pivoting on it until like june so it was a good i mean i got the surgery in like late february so i mean it was a good like three to four month recovery uh and i also like you know they put you in a hard cast for a little bit and then you get like a soft cast and um a walking boot too I, yeah i probably put too much pressure on it on the walking boot because um it still gets a little bit of phantom pain every once in a while but um yeah it's uh held together with some screws. So that was my mistake. It was also at a venue that like the stage is just a bunch of tables pushed together, like heavy, heavy tables, not like folding tables and uh, like big oak tables. And um, then they put like a solid rubber mat over it that's a couple inches thick and that's your stage. But there's no railing because it's not a permanent stage. So, um, you know, accidents happen. And uh happened and luckily it was during like the slow time uh of the winter and then you know i still had weddings in march and april and may and just had to get through them so i will never the foot is like i would have much rather broken a wrist because uh, it sucks to not be able to to walk and uh to have to try and walk upstairs and ride around on a cart like it's it sucks so i uh i did a wedding um I want to say it, it was, I want to say 22 or 19, one of the two. It wasn't 21 and 20, there was like nothing. Um, but uh, the wedding coordinator, uh, they actually had a separate wedding coordinator, and she had the little cart that she had her leg on, 
and she was scooting around. So you have one leg down and you had the knee on the cart and she was scooting around uh, doing stuff. And um, of course, Tracy was helping out because Tracy, you know, not only my wife, but she used to have a type of person, you know, uh, being a, also a coordinator, she was helping out, you know, putting stuff out. But the, the girl was running around the whole wedding um, on the little cart, pushing herself around uh, with one leg. And she could stand for a little bit, but she had the, the walking boot. And they were like, no, don't don't walk on it all day. You got to have on, you know, got to be on the little uh, little cart. And um, she's like, it took her back to her childhood because it's kind of like, uh, you know, she can like ride it and stuff like that. And there was a, um, one of the, there was a ramp in the back that went down uh, outside and she rode it down the ramp. She was like, wee, down the ramp uh, to go outside. And then going back up, uh, <laughs> she had to walk up the, uh, the little cart up because it was a little too high of an incline with one leg trying to scoot up. But uh, she like went right down right outside. She was like, yeah, like, you know, like she was a kid. So it's fun stuff like that. Um, but yeah, having surgery like that, that, that kind of stinks, especially, you know, stepping off stage. And, you know, that's, we, you try to make sure you're safe and stuff. Um, let's see here. Uh, go ahead. Because when I uh, did that wedding, even though my dad was in an accident, he was still able to help me with the DJ gig, like be my roadie, be my there second roadie with one, with one arm because his arm is still hurting. His leg is still sore. And he was able to get his, my DJ gear up into his truck and, you know, help me set it all up and stuff like that. It's, so your well, your dad's not going to be joining any break da dancing uh, classes no. anytime soon, then, right? No, <laughs> no, okay. Um, Mike, Mikey, Mike had uh, he had a full hard cast from his hip down to a, his ankle for a year. So just imagine you're trying to DJ with a hard cast from your hip down to your ankle. How do you, you know, you got cut like cut legs off your pants and. I don't know, wear shorts. I that that'd be that'd be a hard one to try and DJ or you just take the whole year off, say, hey, I have no business for a year. That would that would totally would uh would stink. Oh man, it, it it's always interesting, you know, stuff happens and hopefully nothing happens to you. And again, hopefully you enjoy yourself. Uh Jeff, when you um I know we were talking earlier and I made sure uh you were safe because I know uh North Carolina got hit, uh not in your area, uh, but uh west of you and that uh uh, you were we were talking back and forth a little bit, and you said that there was a uh, fundraiser for your uh, place of work. Uh, do you want do you want to talk about that real quickly? About the fundraiser that you guys are doing? Well, it's just uh, it was uh, coordinated with the Red Cross to have a phone bank for our newscast yesterday, and uh, today they uh, came up with another plan to do some other things. So. Um, you know, that's what TV stations are, you know, they're there to serve the community. And, um, so that's what we're doing. You know, it's, uh, just, um, trying to raise funds, uh, through the Red Cross to uh, help those in the need. And there's a lot of them in need in uh, Western North Carolina, still a lot of people missing. So, um, prayers for them and, uh, hope the best, but, uh, yeah, they're going through some hard times right now. And that that's that's a big thing. Again, if you guys are out there watching this uh, live or you're watching this on YouTube, uh, you can go to American Red Cross's uh, website. It's, rec I believe, redcross.org, if I remember correctly. Um, you can go there and give a donation. They need help right now with uh, everything going on in uh, not just North Carolina, but Tennessee, uh, parts of Georgia, a little bit of Florida. Uh, there's people who need help. Um, and, you know, they basically, for food and shelter and so forth, so if you can donate a dollar or two, you have extra, or uh, in Matt's case, eat one less uh, fish taco and give a donation. <laughs> but uh, if you can, if you have the money to do it, and you can want to reach out to those people and give them a, um, a you know, a few bucks, you know, please reach out to uh, reputable charities that are out there helping. Um, and, you know, yeah, get involved in the local community, get involved with your friends and family. Uh, there's a lot of problem, programs around the country that you can help out uh, in case of time to need. Um, and, you know, it, it's one of the things that um, those people who are affected, if, if anyone's affected and you're a DJ who watches and you have been affected, uh, my heart goes out to you. And I wish that, you know, everything is is better, better days are coming for you. And that uh, if, if you know, if equipment's damaged or something like that, um, you know, hopefully you can get stuff back and up and running fairly quickly. But, um, you know, um, 
all those people out there who are are uh, missing loved ones or not knowing where loved ones are at, um, I hope the best for them and I hope the best for you. And hopefully uh, just, I know lack of communication is a big thing going on right now. I've heard uh, TV stations not working and radio stations and cell phones and not having power and so forth. Uh, there's a lot of things going on and hopefully uh, your friends, family and loved ones are all safe. And uh, again, in a time of uh, of a disaster like this, it's great to hear, um, you know, again, uh, people stepping up like Jeff's work and stuff like that, uh, helping out again. And there are community-based uh, services. And it's nice to see that. And when I heard that, I was like, that is really, really cool. And I hopefully that you reach out and uh, give a little helping hand to whoever needs a helping hand with. With that said, we've come up on the whole hour and uh, we've gone through everything. Uh, Mike said, black sweatpants. Yeah, I, I I guess, you know, because they, they'll stretch, you know, the sweatpants. Yeah, I, I, I dig sweatpants. Trust me, I'm a fat guy. Fat guy and sweatpants always work great. Um, so tonight's episode, uh, I'm going to actually have Matt take us out tonight since he's so excited about his fish tacos. He ate them so quickly. He, he didn't share. <laughs> Matt, take us out tonight. Thank you for watching the DJ Roundtable. Peace. Peace out. Night, everyone. <laughs>